Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about seven times to say no to a contractor you're hiring. Yeah. Hey everyone, it's Joe in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Yeah, and today we're talking about seven times you really should say no to a contractor that you're planning to hire. Uh, you know, often we will hire them, you know, some of it's working on your house or in your car, but often it's also even for consulting, right? I hire people to do projects for me, and I know Jackie has done it too. One of the very first burning ones for me is if they don't have some sort of a referral or testimonial, at least several, then I'm not doing business with you. Uh, it, it's a simple thing, right? If you want people to be able to do good work, if you don't have any kind of a referral or testimonial, it's really hard. And and those can be anything. It can be, uh, who knows, uh, topic threads on forums. It can be all kinds of stuff. But if they don't have something to show you where where other people have been glad for their work or or so, yeah, absolutely, it, it's an important one. And I'll say the next one they can provide examples of what they've done something somewhat you know similar to what you're asking for um, in just some way right they, they should be able to provide not just talk but at least some example they might not have access to something fully working they can show you but at least within reason they should be able to show you something similar they they have on hand or have done recently or whatever it might be yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna tell a personal example where it's actually kind of flipping it because i didn't i didn't get the job because of this but it was the, the irony is really funny was this is back when i was a data scientist and i was interviewing for this job but it's i forget the name of the company but they own chilies you know in this whole series of restaurants and one of the questions in there was they wanted someone who had done basically like estimating where to put a restaurant, you know, and the value, how much we should earn, this and that. And I started explaining to him, well, with regression, you know, the regression model, and I've done all this regression modeling, and it's that's what you do, right? But he, he wasn't a data scientist, and he, he to him, I was citing something totally not related. And, and I, I can guarantee you, he really thought, like, I have no idea what he's even talking about. And I'm like, it's the same thing. Like it, it's, it's, it was funny, but I'm like, oh, it's funny now. Um, Brinker, maybe that's what it was. But anyway, yeah. So m make sure not only you provide it, but they understand the relevance, you know, when you're doing that. Uh, Cause sometimes someone will give it to you and you're like, how are you saying this is, you know, similar? Um, and maybe it is. Yeah, I, I've seen the exact same thing in many, many, many ex aspects, right? You're talking about, I don't know, a disease, and you're giving an analogy with a car, and the person sitting in front of you is uh, a seamstress, and she's just like, what are you talking ah. about? I, I totally don't get any of the things you're saying. And yeah, so absolutely having something that's somewhat similar just makes a lot of sense. Well, it's funny you said that, Jack, because it just dawned on me of like, that is the power of an analogy, right? You bring it into their context to help them get how it's relevant because they can't understand it in yours, right? Or having a harder time. Uh, yeah. So the, the next one, which is, it's honestly, this is one of my favorite ones is if they're not willing to sign an NDA, you know, a non-disclosure agreement or some sort of a contract, whether, you know, whatever it is, I, you know, that's a big flag because it, it needs to be, you need to have something signed and, and it has some skin in the game. Yeah, absolutely. It, <laughs> sure, it might be something fairly small, but if you actually do want to extend on it, if, if you want to keep them on for longer, having that thing done immediately uh, or, or just knowing they'd be willing to, um, sign something it might not be a big legal document but at least as long as you have that that one thing that you can point back to and say 
here's what we agreed upon, or here's uh, where you said you wouldn't actually disclose any of this, or whatever it might be. So, so yeah, it's 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 one of those flags. That's a good one to have in your bag. And we, the next one here, I'll cover that as well. Is they they want you know half or more of the pay up front. Uh, it, it's the, yeah, it, it's okay to give something up front, but it should be an amount that's more agreeable. Uh, who knows what that might be, depending on the size of the contract and stuff like that. But it might be twenty percent or ten percent or something, just for them on the other end, knowing yeah, you you can, you're willing, all of that to pay, but it's still. It, it it can't be half, right? It it sh shouldn't. So, it should, yeah. unless you have a past long ongoing relationship, you know, with the person. Then then it's probably okay. You know, you can consider it. But and and to reverse it also, like I'm not willing to work for someone if they're not if they're not willing to pay me a little bit of money at the beginning, right? To just to start. And usually, what I do is like kind of like you said, like let's say it's twenty percent or thirty percent. So let's say, let's keep it simple and say it's 30%. I asked for up front, 30% estimated. And I'll work typically through the first third and then do up to 50 to 65%, 66%, you know, the two thirds before I ask for any more money. So I bring it back to them doing more than, you know, they made the initial risk of giving me some money. And then I work some extra to try to help, you know, negate that and kind of make it equal we're sharing with the risk, right? And then hopefully... At the end, that you know, you get paid for everything. Yeah, 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 and it can be in in sentiments or whatever it might be. It might be over time. Let's say they've quoted you something they want for the project, and and they'll give you status updates or whatever, and you will pay twenty percent more or twenty percent or whatever it might be. It might not be here's twenty percent, and then when you're done, eighty. That, that might not be the way it's done. Depends. So, yeah. You know what I didn't mention, I was going to mention also is if whatever project you're working on has a large outlay that whoever's doing what, like, let's say I had to buy a certain program in order to do, you know, the work for you, then that's okay to charge them. You know, okay, if I'm paying for that, I, I'm okay that I have to pay for that. It shouldn't come out of, you know, the person doing the work's wallet. Right. And again, unless it's a really large company or you have a past history with them, uh, that's something that you should have that paying for it, you know, pay for that also. Yeah. Uh, and the next one is, is, again, one of my really favorite ones of, uh, you know, getting, making sure you res people respond to you in a timely manner, because if someone, even though I'm asking for them stuff and they're, I can tell they're just too busy and too haggard and too whatever, then uh, you know what? <sighs> It's, I don't want to deal with it. Of course, it depends on the project and if I'm in a hurry or not also, right? And, and also the price, but yeah. Yeah, but I've, I've, I'd say I've, I've tried to hire quite a few contractors over time and it, it's also a matter of having that rapport over time because if they don't respond time, uh, respond timely, mm. I've, I've, I've haven't people gone haywire or whatever you would call that, where all of a sudden you give them the task, they've decided to do it, and then nothing. Crickets, right? It, it's like, and you're sitting there, you're waiting for the thing you agreed upon, and there's just nothing, and then finally you get some kind of response, and it's it's like... I wasn't there. I was sick. I was in a car accident, or whatever it was. Uh, it 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 ends up feeling a little bit like an excuse. If they instead had responded timely uh, and said, "Sorry, uh, I'll get back to you, personal, whatever," who knows what it could have been? Just something so that it doesn't become an excuse three weeks down the line, or whatever. So yeah. Absolutely. I'd say the next one we have is if they didn't don't show up to meetings. That's that's a big red one, right? Um, on time, sure. If they don't show up at all, but if they 
don't show up on time that's kind of like timely manner with the responding and sure enough if they're not prepared right if you've agreed upon something at a specific time and they haven't prepared anything for the meeting yeah that that's also a kind of a sad one if it's someone you're trying to hire right it, it's like okay yeah I'll, I'll be happy to hire you okay you have some great referrals and you've provided some, some great examples um, you're willing to sign this contract fair enough um, you don't want too much upfront great and we've had quite a good back and forth here let's have a meeting let's uh, look at some of the stuff uh, if you bring this and this and that and I'll uh, bring this and that and then the meeting comes they're half an hour late or whatever it might be and they haven't prepared any of the things you agreed upon let, let, me give you, there, right? let me give you a real world scenario where it sounds weird but um this is a true story right and I'll change names so no one gets caught but uh so in market research, a good friend of mine, he was going to present to the clients and he invited this other guy to come with him just, just out of curiosity, you know, to help, help get him, you know, involved and stuff, just make him feel good. So they both go and it's a really big meeting. So it's not all about them. So the first half of the meeting happens and they're like, okay, now, you know, why don't you guys go ahead and get up and present? So the friend that my buddy invited gets up and starts, I'm not kidding. He gets up and says, Gee, I, I wish I was here earlier because now that I hear everything you guys are saying, we brought all the wrong data. You know, like we we don't have any of your and and my friend said he was just ready to kill him. He's like, he's like, you know, you idiot. Um, he it basically if they had been now these were employees for the overall company, so you know you don't fire an internal you know um, group of people for that kind of reason. But um, you may not use them again, right, for your project. But it was just one of those my friend couldn't believe that, like, he just shot them in the foot so hard. And it's like, and he didn't have to. Like, they wouldn't know. It's just crazy. right? But he made it seem like they weren't prepared, is my point, right? Even though he's like, everything we have is, it's very helpful and relevant. Uh, but, yeah. Often, and this is a, a sign for me, and, and it's a sign that, you know, people are busy, this and that. But often also that maybe they're just not paying attention. And Jackie, is all, he's always very good with me when we're doing stuff, because I know you can tell I, I multitask and I might be doing something else, but I still manage to actually listen, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's very rare where I, I tune out entirely and go, what? Um, but what drives me nuts is when I do explain things to people in general and multiple times, and you're like, then, oh, oh, hey, so what was this? Can you explain this part again? I'm like, yeah, we, we covered that several times, you know, like it gets old and I just don't have the patience, right? Where like my time is valuable. We were talking about this kind of thing earlier. Like I don't, I don't have the time to be re-explain myself over and over. Well, yeah. and, and sure enough, if if it's a contractor and it, they might even be on an hourly rate, right, it 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 becomes an even bigger issue if you then don't need to right. pay them to keep explaining the thing. That's that's also a big no-no. It's it's fair enough to explain it and cover a few whatever things that weren't explained well enough the first time over or whatever um, they should either be taking notes or it should be recorded or whatever it might be because you're not supposed to re-explain and re-explain and re-explain um, uh, once or twice might be fine but other, after that it should be this one thing over here I'm uh, having doubts about exactly what you meant or whatever it might be but not the entire thing right That's yeah and, and Jackie to, to chime in on that it's related but it, it gets, it's, it's back to now because almost everything I do is on zoom and I'll often offer to teach people some stuff and statistics or whatever or auto hotkey and I'll, and I'll say, and it's, it's, it is part of it's just because it's like, hey, we're going to cover a lot of stuff. It's a lot to remember. But I always say, let me record the meeting in case you ever want to go back. But more often, I mean, part of it is because I know it's a lot of information, but I don't want them coming back over and over and asking me the same questions again, right? I'm like, you have the video. Go watch the video, right? Just so much easier. 
Yeah, it's there, and it's it's right. It's you can watch it at your leisure or whatever you'd call that whenever you want to whenever it fits you you don't need to bother the one on the other end and again if you rewatched it and you slowed down where you needed some explaining you might be able to even ask even better questions right and actually move the project along for real so yeah Awesome. Well, I hope that you guys enjoy that. If there's other ones that you think, you know, we should have brought up in here, I'd love to hear it, right? There's a lot of things we could have listed, but, you know, these are the biggies that we think you should be looking out for. Yep, that's the thing always when we do lists like this, right? We try to find some of the really big ones that we have encountered and have examples for and stuff like that. But uh, all the rest of you guys, you probably have all kinds of other examples. Let us hear them. Or tell us some of the horror stories. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to know those. All right, thanks. Bye. Yeah, bye.